were you in the army? I was in the army. Okay, wait, did you enlist? I enlisted uh, in the medical detachment. What year was that? In 1945. 45, mm -hmm. so you're getting yeah. towards the end of the war. Yes, I was. Uh -huh. So well, why did you decide to do that? Was it because everybody was involved in the war effort, or why did you decide to, to join up? No, uh, a couple of my friends that worked with me uh, had decided they were going to go in, and uh, so I thought, well, I'll go in too, because, you know, I love nursing and love people anyway, so. That so it worked good. out good, good fit. Worked huh? out very good. Yeah. No, I was medical and surgical technician. Okay, so you were in sur surgery. I did do surgery as well, yes. I was in ICU quite a bit. And uh, we saw, you know, a lot of the prisoners of war that came back, you know, and patients, of course, that needed special care, which uh, I was assigned to them at times. And, and it was a real blessing. But, you know, people that say that this Holocaust did not happen, you know, uh, just never saw those patients. They never saw the pictures and things that went on, you know, and how sad it was. In fact, somebody said they were trying to take World War II out of the, the Holocaust, out of the history books. And you know how sad that is. To what hospital were you working in? Bushnell Where's General that? Hospital in Brigham City, Utah. Oh, mm -hmm. Utah. Yeah, and it was right at the uh, mouth of the Wasatch Mountains and we used to sit and eat those bean cherries and apricots, and oh, they were so good. Is that hospital still there now? No, they it, they had an Indian school there, and now I understand that it's used as a um, uh, just business offices. Did patients ever die there, or were they pretty much stabilized where they went? Oh yes, yes, yeah. patients did die. Yes, but we also had uh, dependents on my ward, and this one particular lady I remember had diabetes, and uh, I didn't even realize how sick she was, you know. But uh, the last day that I was there, why well, she asked me, before I went on my two days off, she asked me if I would do her fingernails. And so I did her fingernails, you know, and uh, when I came back, she passed away. But I was so thankful, you know, that uh, I had that chance to talk with her, you know, because some of them get very lonely. And we had babies, not very many, but uh, we had a baby once in a while in there too. The young man I told you about, whose name was Woods, I don't remember what his first name was, he had been uh, a prisoner of war. And he, you talk about emaciated, he was nothing but skin and bones. And then after a few months, why he was just rosy and healthy looking, you know, and it was so wonderful to see him, but yes. They came back in terrible condition. I never heard anybody that ever said, well, you know, I don't want to go to war. They all wanted to go to war to defend our country. I just feel like, you know, this country, we are so blessed in this country because so many people don't have those choices. You know, I don't, just like you said, I don't think that a lot of the young people these days realize the cost of freedom. But uh, what a privilege it is to be able to serve our country. Rhoda, as a, as a veteran and an American citizen, tell me what the American flag means and represents to you. It just stands for the blood that we shed, the freedoms that we have. A love for our country. I think that I think they should not even allow flag burning. They should put them, it should be a felony. They should have to go to prison.
God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains to the prairie to the ocean white with foam. God bless America, my home. Sweet home, God bless America, my home, sweet home. I want you to look right into the camera, Rhoda, and give me a salute. Go ahead. Excellent.